Well, hello everyone. It's Paul Hills and Harrison Freeland here from the agency, Team Hillsy. Um, we have just finished uh, quarter three of financial quarter three, year yeah. 24 and um, it's been a very busy period. So we just, uh, we're going to do these quarterly updates, um, give you a little bit of an insight on what, on what our team has been up to, but also what's happening in the marketplace on the coast and in Sydney. So... Um, Harry, we've had a really busy quarter, haven't we? We've, yeah. I think we've sold, uh, we've sold a lot of properties um, in seven different suburbs. So that's, mm -hmm. again, our unique selling yep. point, isn't it, that we're not tied to one suburb. Battle Bay, Berkeley Vale, Wombrel, Niagara Park, Glenning Valley, Fountaindale, Blue Haven. So um, a good, good mix of suburbs mm -hmm. there. Um, one of the highlights for me has been a, a sale that we had, um, beautiful acreage in Anderson Road at Glenning Valley. Um, really unique property, just high set, beautiful sprawling two and a half acres, um, dual, dual living. Uh, we sold that off market with, um, with a family that were looking for three, how do we say it, three Three sort of separate to, living areas yeah, and that. So yeah. like the dual living plus there was like the granny flat option for them as yeah. well. So yeah, yeah three, three family areas that they could you know, have the parents and then the kids and yeah. stuff. So. And the good, the good thing about that one, that the owners really wanted to try off market for, for a couple of weeks and our, our um, good relationships with local buyers agents meant that we, uh, we were able to strike up a, a really good deal prior to going to market. Um, uh, we've been asked not to disclose the price, but I can tell you it was a very, very good price. Uh, it was a great result, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, cheapest sale we've had this quarter, uh, 470k, a beautiful little two-bedroom unit in Blue Haven. Mm -hmm. um, um, that was a uh, tenanted property, but we found a, a really good buyer for that one. Um, Suzanne, she's looking for a little, cute little home for herself, yeah. isn't she? Yeah, something low maintenance but still modern. Yeah, yeah, that would have made a good investment too, wouldn't it? Because I think Absolutely. the rental yeah. term was pretty good on that. Yeah, the rental yield was um, above five percent, which you don't get a lot of on the coast. No, that's good, isn't mm. it? Um, so um, the most expensive was obviously the acreage in Glenning Valley. The most unique listing we've got on the market at the moment I, I love about real estate is the fact that we have so many different styles of property and this one is just unbelievable. It, it, go on and check it out. It's at 13 Leeds Lane in Tumbiumbi. So those of you that are familiar with the coast will know that Tumbiumbi is an exclusive little pocket of acreages, um, multi-million dollar homes. Um, but this one is really unique in the sense that it's only on uh, 1,200 square metres. And I say only because it's surrounded by two and a half acre properties. But it's like it feels like you're in the middle of an acreage uh, yeah. haven, doesn't it? Like, yeah, I often describe it as it's got like a Hunter Valley estate feel to it because yeah. it's got hedges lining it and there's tall pine trees, so it just feels like you're in the middle of acreage, but you've only got like two lawns to look after. So perfect, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a quarter of the time to get all your maintenance done for the Actually, week. I can't imagine having a vineyard yeah. there. That'd be nice. Yeah, that, that's that's. What um, like. We've got some good interest in that one, but go online and check it out. I'll put the link in the description. But um, if you can come and have a look at that one, or you know anyone that's looking to buy on the coast that that wants the acreage lifestyle, but without the the uh, upkeep of having acres, you need to check that one out. And again, it's only seven minutes to Shelley Beach, which. You know, a lot of people don't realise how close you are to the, the coast's best beaches. Like, I live at Forrester's yeah. Beach. It's, it's, again, I think it's seven or eight minutes to drive there, so it's yeah, amazing. That's right. Um, so that's, that's a, bit of a, a bit of a wrap on Team Hillsy. Like, it's been a really good quarter. It's good mm -hmm. to see lots of buyers out there. Um, Harry is our stat man, <laughs> and he is going to give you a bit of a rundown on what's been happening uh, locally and in Sydney. So Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, so basically for us, what we saw um, after the first 12 weeks, we had about 60 open homes and saw about 300 buyers. Um, so out of all of those, about two-thirds were from out of area, um, mostly Sydney, um, and a lot of them as well, first home buyers. Um, heaps of first home buyers looking at them. Like the last three months, I think we saw more first home buyers than we did the six months prior to that. Yeah. And... Um, Berkeley Vale is where we saw the highest level of activity for buyers, um, consistently getting about 10 plus like people at every open home. Uh, and whereas some, you know, some of the other suburbs might have seen a couple, a handful here and there every mm. weekend, Berkeley Vale just seemed to have a lot every single weekend. We saw heaps of buyers, um, and I did notice that um, 
all our renovated sort of turnkey properties, anything that was ready to go, ready to move into, had the most interest and um, were generally sold within about three or four weeks. Uh, so if you're thinking about the renovation as a worth it kind of thing, then it definitely can depend on the market. Um, this year, when we've seen a lot more buyers around, they've, they've really gone straight for turnkey, uh, especially when people are trying to save money at the moment. They don't want anything that's going to need some work. That's, yeah, just, I was just going to point out that we have done a bit of a series recently on the socials that, because mm. um, we get asked that question a lot, like just yesterday we, we went to an, a property and, and, yeah. and she asked us what is left to do to the home to, to before bringing it onto the market and, you know, questions like painting the roof and that sort of thing. But the, the, depending on your budget, there's definitely things you can do to, to really enhance the, the value, um, even on a small budget. So just go and check out that on our socials. That was mm -hmm. something we've done recently, um, um, renovating for profit. Yeah. Um, carry on, sorry. No, that's good, that's good. Um, the other thing besides turnkey properties um, is dual occupancy. For months and months now, Probably the number one inquiry I get from people is what dual occupancy properties do we have? Um, there's so many, so many families with uh, with extended families, you know, the in-laws and outlaws, or just teenagers that they want a separate dwelling for them to live on, um, or even investors as well. Um, but I think people not just looking for family needs, but trying to save some money as well. So they realise that they couldn't afford to buy, and so they're pitching in with their parents as well, buying maybe an acreage so that they can save money on the mortgage and they both get to live sort of close to each other. So, Sometimes yeah. not too close. No, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, turnkey and dual occupancy have been uh, the biggest ones. Um, I always like to talk about Sydney because it's pretty much just down the road. It's like less than an hour's drive from here. Um, and so they have a big impact on what's happening here. And yeah. Sydney has been just the leader at the moment in, in setting some standards. So they, they've grown about 11.1% since this time last year in, in house prices. Yeah, that's interesting. So that's that's quite a jump because it was going pretty slow last year and then it was little increases here and there. And then this last three months, they've gone up a couple of percent every yeah. month. Um, so February was a great month for auctions. Um, they had a record month like across the country for auctions. Um, and March was, was even better in Sydney. They had 3,670 auctions and 74% clearance rate. Wow. So that's like, and at the moment with, with house prices going up and up and still having quite a strong clearance rate with that many auctions, it's just, it's an indicator of a very good market. Um, and obviously we'd love to see that continue, right? We'd love to see this confidence from buyers. Um, it's so hard to tell what will happen in the next six months. At the moment, uh, it seems like people are very confident to buy. And we're generally about, on the Central Coast, we're generally a month or two behind whatever's happening in Sydney. Yeah. So I think once we start to see the numbers change in Sydney, we'll expect a similar change on the yeah. coast. Yeah. Yeah. With this, I, I reckon we're seeing probably 50 to 60% of people that are coming through our open homes or email inquiry at the moment is from Sydney. Yeah. Um, and uh, we were talking to a person, uh, a potential client yesterday, weren't we? And they were saying that they had offices in Sydney and mm. um, that... Um, a lot of people just still aren't going back to, to, to the offices. Yeah. So yeah. I think more and more people can work from home is uh, means that, you know, as you say, it's 60 minutes into Sydney. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, thanks, Harry. Um, we've got a few good ones coming onto the market too, haven't we? Um, we've got a, a pretty, talking of dual living, we've got an acreage coming up in Fountaindale, which yeah. um, in the next few weeks, which is just that, dual yeah. living, isn't it? Five yeah. acres. Um, Huge shed, yeah. big granny flat, but and, uh, it's like, that's going to be a great one. If you're into cars, it's got about a nine-car garage. So Yeah, that's a fantastic one. Can't wait to show you that. Um, we launched one yesterday, a beautifully uh, renovated cottage up at Morissette. Mm -hmm. I say cottage, it's probably a 1950s style home. Mm -hmm. um, that's number 27 Terrigal Street. That, um, you haven't actually seen that yet, but no. it's it's been sympathetically renovated it's just beautiful and that's a guide of 650 so um, first home buyers investors you should check that one out um, and we've also got a, a two bedroom unit coming up at the entrance which is really good that's that's a perfect first home or investment and that's got lake views as well views over Tugger nice Lake. renovated kitchen yeah nice like, beautiful, beautiful kitchen wooden floorboards yeah it's just a lovely little unit yeah, yeah so that we're going to get a lot of interest in that one too um, any of these once we can post the links we will um, Harry, you had a bit of a milestone 
at the last couple of weeks. You've been in real estate for two years. Yes. Um, we did post about that yes. on another video, but quickly, <laughs> what's your favourite uh, favourite thing so far? Um, Don't think about it too much. I think I think really what's what's been standing out to me lately is just that I've realised how much I've grown. Because obviously when that when a milestone like that comes up, an anniversary, you sort of start to reflect and you realise how much has changed. Because, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't really notice small changes. Uh, but when you go back and look over a one- or two-year period and you realise, wow, I've, I've definitely stepped up since then, I think that just feels good. And knowing that is a, is a motivation to keep going as well. Because it's, it's definitely easy to um, get stuck in a rut. In, yep. in real estate, when we've had the really slow months, it feels a bit kind of, uh, you really slow down a lot and you're starting to question what you're doing and whether what you're doing is actually working. So when you when you actually reflect and look at it as a, as a whole and you can see that you're just increasing every time, going up another level, it's good motivation to keep going. Yeah. What drives you? Uh, genuinely helping people, Yeah. I think, I, because it's, it's a selfish feeling, actually. Um, because, you know, even though you're helping someone, it makes you feel really good. But I think just, I, I think the sales I always seem to remember are the ones that have really had an impact on someone. Yeah. Um, there's been sales we've had where um, investors have bought it and we haven't really had much, you know, contact with them. They sort of saw it once, they bought it and then didn't really see them again. And I always seem to forget those properties. But yeah. the ones where we're working with buyers for a long time, and, um, and they never know if they're going to get it and then their finance comes through and they get it or sellers that are going through a tough time and we've just been able to help them, um, I think have, have just really made me feel good. Good. Yeah, like I've had a better connection to yeah. the community as well. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's good to have you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks um, for having me. So that's a wrap, ladies and gents. Um, so that's quarter three. Um, we'll be back with quarter four wrap. That's actually end of year, so that'll be interesting to see what the next three months holds. Um, this will also be going out on podcast as well, so um, if you want to check out our other podcasts, um, I will post the links to those. Thank you. Thanks.